watching for lots of knitting and crochet on Yarn Lane. You don't need to change channels. Pop the kettle on and meet us back here in a couple of minutes. You can also watch on the Yarn Lane YouTube channel and Facebook Live. To get a sneaky peek of the products featured on the show and shop, please go to the Yarn Lane website at www.yarnlane.com or via our UK call centre on 0800 4700 600. And remember, if you've already shopped with Sewing Street today, you won't pay any more postage and packaging for shopping with Yarn Lane because it's 1 p.m.p. across both channels all day. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, Click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. and find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the program guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Good afternoon, welcome to Yarn Lane. We are the only uh, shopping channel in the UK to be exclusively dedicated to yarn, all things yarn, whether it be crochet or knitting or anything like that. And it's so popular, I cannot tell you, and it's nearly been six months, six months, we've nearly been open now. Anyway, I'm gonna take you straight to the website because this is where, the most, where it all happens, right? You go to the website, www.yarnlane.com. You, you'll get this, you click on Watch Live, now you can send a message in the box on the right hand side there and that's Hannah producer, producer Hannah will get that and put it in a white box across the bottom of the screen. But more importantly, 
You need to scroll down. Everything from today's show is on pre-order. Everything is there. What's that, that guy? I need to ask a question. Why are all four? Okay, re please read the words. Please read the words because they're not all together. They're not a bundle together. They're not a bundle together. We are doing corner to corner crochet today. And got lovely accessories. Now, I need to just warn you. You see these? These fishy. They're not fishes, but these yarn bobbins. We got them in large and small. Last time we had them on, I've never seen them. They completely sold out. They, they completely and utterly sold out. Look, that's your large one. One ninety nine for the large one. Now, Hannah's mum's got some of these. And we've got small ones, which you'll see Wendy using in a minute. Right, but first of all, I'm going to take you through what's for sale and then we'll get on with the demonstration because it's only an hour long and we need to get on, right? Okay, so we're going to start with the forget-me-not. So at least I'll show you a picture of the forget-me-not. There you go. So that's this. And Wendy's actually got it on her desk when we come to sit. I'd say that was upside down, that one myself. Right, the picture on the website. Oh, okay. The picture on the website, please don't get confused. Has a picture of all four makes on it. You're only buying for $15.99 TW6660. You are only, but not only, you are buying the corner to corner crochet kit for the forget me not. And what you get in that is you get the instructions. Elliot, now I don't know how you're going to show this because they're way over there. Well, All right. Yeah, okay. Right, okay. This is Forget Me Not. That's this one. So you get the uh, instructions. Ignore all this. Ignore all that. That's nothing to do with it. Right, it's all crochet, but it's not with this kit. Right, so you get this one, the little yellow one, the white one, the white one, and the darker blue one. There's no crochet hook. You need your own crochet hook and you need size. Let me just have a look. Four, is it? Four and a half or four. Four and a half or four. And that's to make. Now, you'll see the actual cushion in a second over there with Wendy. You'll see the actual cushion. It's all a double knit. Mariner yarns. It's all 100% acrylic and you get the pe one pale blue, one darker blue, two whites and then a lid diddy little yellow. And that makes that. Oh no, it's not upside down. I take it back. Wendy put it that way. Yeah, sorry. I do, yeah, sorry, Elliot. I take that back. But the pattern's got one pointing at the top. Anyway, right, that's a forget-me-not. I'm just going to move that to one side, one second, because I've not got much room on the table. Right, next is the sheep. So let's see a picture of the sheep. Remember, the picture on the website, after this shows all four patterns. You're only buying, for $14.99 this one, $14.99 you're buying the pattern for the sheep, right? So in that bundle, you do get instructions, you get two of that lovely green. Is it love it, that one? Is that called love it? Then, oh, excuse me. Then you've got black, you've got white, and you've got grey. Now, uh, Wendy will tell you, well, the, the thing is, you can make, even though it's called a cushion cover, there's lots of different variants you can do. But basically, this is enough for the front and the back of the cushion, if you so wish. That's the sheep one. Oh, quarter of the stock of that one's gone straight away. There it is. On the website, you'll, you, it shows all four patterns for some reason. You're only getting your, your kit to make your sheep. Okay. Oh, half the stock's gone. That's going to sell out. That will go. That will definitely go. Next. Right, puppy is next. Right, hang on. We need to get a bigger desk, don't we? Right, this is the puppy one next. You get loads in this one. 17 
You get loads in this one. So you get the instructions. You, I'm just going to reach across you. You get two blues. You get one white. You get one black. You get one caramelly colour. One natural. One pale pink. Did a red one not fall on the floor? Oh no, there it is. Didn't fall off. There it is. And a little red one. And a little yellow one. Blimey! Seventeen ninety nine for all of this. Ignore that. It's just the, look. Plus your instructions. Seventeen ninety is upside down. Oh no, it's not there. You go. Seventeen ninety nine. That one. You need your crochet hook. I'm presuming they're all four and a half and four. Are they? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a lovely finish to it, isn't it? Anyway, um, so that's that one. And then last but not least. It's slightly different. Now, there's two things I've got to say. First of all, we've got the blanket as a demonstration here. But also, our green is slightly different. So there you go. So ignore the border. Just look at this bit here. We'll talk about all of this later. But, the, but this is what you're able to make. This is what you're able to make, right? Uh, so you, this is the green we're offering. It's not the sage, soft sage green. I think it's lovely, that green. It's more of a chartreuse, is it? Oh, actually, it will have a name on it. It's got, it might have a name on it. Apple. Apple green, I can see that. Isn't it funny? They, they put it on the internet what colour it is, but we don't have it on the, on the little bit of cut paper. Where? Yeah. Shade 16, dye lot 7, and that's all it's got written on there. Anyway, that's apple. Then you get a... Oh, no, I'm picking up the wrong one then. Then you get two white... No, one white one. You get one caramelly, one pale. Oh no, hang on, they're different, they're co different colours. They're different colours in the body. Yeah, that's caramel and latte. Then you get the yellow. So all of the colours we've got for this, it's not just the background. So look, the yellow is more of a gold. Then the, this one here is one of those two. Then the paler one on the body down here is that one. Then you've got the white for the eyes. You're getting awful, you're going to have loads of that left over. And then the black, they're not called antennas, they're called os... Oh, ocelots. No, hang on, that's an animal. O o o I'll think of it, I'll think of it. They do that, didn't they? Anyway, 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 and then the black, the black, the black, the black. And you get the instructions. They're called... I'm sure it's called ocelot or something like that, isn't it? Anyway. <clears throat> and then you get the instructions. So Wendy's going to take you through everything. I've already shown you the, um, what we call the, the um, yarn bobbins. And, uh, and Wendy's going to take you through the hour. And if we need to come back to talk to me about any of the bundles, we will do. Oh, there's loads of messages come through. Loads of messages come through. Right, OK, let me just put that over there. That's over there. That o Wendy, you start. Oh, you are being tidy over there, aren't you, today? I have to be, because there's so much, so I much wool. I just need to start by saying that you get so much more wool than you need. Okay, yarn, and, yarn. Oh, sorry. Well, I call it, it depends how old you are. It yeah. was always called wool in yes, my day, yes, but yes, yes. wool and yarn are the same thing, although some do argue that a wool has a different mix. So, but yes, but when the wool's people, made out of wool, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. but when people use those two words, that's what they're talking about. Um, and this is, um, this is my absolute passion. Corner to corner is um, where it all started for me because I loved being able to make something with pictures on. Right. And this is exactly what, you don't have to make pictures when you do corner to corner. Just hold, hold it up so you but, can show that one there. But forward. when you progress, to um, once you've made just plain corner to corner then you can add uh, change colors in the little squares and these are the kind of things that you can make perfect claire says uh, afternoon i'm looking forward to this i taught myself to corner to corner oh top corner to corner graphs i'd love to see an expert doing it <laughs> sorry claire we couldn't get one um allison says hope these are easy wendy our wedding anniversary is in may and we had Forget me nots as our wedding flower decorations. I need this cushion for our new oh. boat. No, you've not, you're downsizing. You've got no room for them. Uh, they're only small. Oh, the blanket is adorable, says Princess. And Margaret says they're called Ossicones, John. And mm. Judith says Ossicones, John. I knew I was. Uh, well, you had the O. You started I was with near, the O, I was didn't near, you? Wasn't I? Um, right. And what I would also like, first of all, please may I say a huge, huge, huge thank you to our little crochet elves. Because without our crochet elves, we wouldn't have a show. Tell them, not me. Oh, sorry, tell you. So I need to write them down because I couldn't remember who made who. Right, tell So yes. first of all, we have the Forget Me Not, which is this one. And this was, so it's upside down. This was made by Adele Coward. Thank you very much, Adele. 
and then we have single figures on that one now. Then we have the sheep. This is my favourite. I love the sheep. Now this was made by Andrea Plume. Now I think Andrea found a machine or something to be able to do it because I have never known anyone do it so quick. Oh wow! She must crochet like lightning. Um, and then we have the puppy on the shelf behind us, who is made by Vicky Brown. So and oh, you're made by Vicky Brown. Oh, I saw it with Vicky Brown. Oh, it's not the Queen you? of Dangle, is it? I have no idea. The is queen, it the Queen of the Dangle? Queen of Dangle. Huh? The Queen of Dangle. Earrings. Let's oh, work okay. on the jewellery channel with her. <laughs> right. And then this one. I did that one. Oh, I was That's... about to say this one was obviously done by a beginner, wasn't it, this one? Yeah. Uh, the, who put the border on? I did. Okay. No, the reason, the reason I did that, because um, that, that's... that's um, older than the rest of these I yes, should say I and I put a and that one has been washed as well yeah. so it, it shows that acrylic is amazing because it's lovely and soft and um, you can wash it so I put the border on with that now you will get you can see that you've got lots of yes. um, wool left yarn left over uh, so you may just have to mix up the colours round and it was just a simple if you can do corner to corner I'm very confident that you already know how to, to do a treble stitch okay so they're just trebles around okay. the outside Perfect. so I'm very very confident with that but I don't want everyone um, to think this is so difficult because corner to corner all it is is literally starting in one corner and then going out right. and then stopping and then coming back in again and the reason I love, oh bless you, the reason I love corner to corner so much is you determine the size. Whereas when you're doing a granny square, it very much determines the size for you because you keep going round and round yeah, yeah. and it's just square. With something that you start in a corner and end in a corner, you can then create how big you want it. But then now the patterns for these are to make... These are specific to make the cushions right. and then you've got the giraffe who's a little stroller blanket. Okay, we can talk, let's talk about the giraffe later then. So let's talk about the cushions. Right now. Oh, what's the matter, Hannah? Sorry, Hannah. Oh, somebody you needed the pu puppy. Vicky, Queen of Dangle. Oof. I'm not the Queen of Dangle, John. Wendy, it was a pleasure to do the oh. puppy for you. Oh, Vicky in West Yorkshire. Vicky in West Yorkshire. Thank you, Vicky. Oh. They on honestly like lightning. And if you see the little puppy as you can there, he's just got one square, or she, I don't know yet, the one square for a tongue. And oh, okay. You, and you get a whole 25 gram ball. Yes, yeah, so it's amazing. Absolutely fantastic. Okay. What I would say, as I've just noticed, that with the forget me not, um, I use white for my centre, and I've seen that one of those isn't white, is it? So all you would need to do then was substitute. Oh, forget me not's here. Yes. No, I've got the two whites. Are they both white, or is one cream and one white? Oh. Because to me, that looks one cream and one white, and if that's the case, that's good. Oh, no, you're right, you're right. Oh, right. No, that, one that's shade 40, one shade 41. Brilliant. Yes, because this centre here, although it doesn't show up very well on the camera is actually white this little center bit here um, and then the outside is cream now I will also just say before we start with the stitch because the stitch is the most important thing <laughs> do you never take a breath no right I've got things to say to you where Susie's saying John and Wendy are looking forward to that Jacqueline says disappointed I've noticed the giraffe is a blanket very new to crochet need to make a giraffe cushion for my new son how can I change from the blanket to a cushion we better tell us that later yeah. Yes. Well, we'll have a go. We'll have a go. We'll have a go. And the question from you, Hannah, is... Oh, it's not a question. Uh, bought the forget-me-nots. So looking forward to watching this. Wendy is so good at explaining things from oh. Sabina in Staffordshire. Oh, that is so lovely. Right. Now, you will see with the giraffe... That's that... not a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> That's can, a sheep. Can you tell it's been a long day? Yeah. <laughs> it's because we were talking about the giraffe. Yeah. With the sheep, the sheep has a corner-to-corner -corner back. Right. And then... The, how that is made is just to follow the same amount of rows for the front, but don't do any colour changes. Okay. So that's that. Now, if you and want... And there's enough yarn in the kit to do th that. There is. If you want to be frugal like me, with this one, we've got the front as a, um, Forget a corner to corner. Yeah. And then I have backed it with fabric. Okay. And I've put a zip in it as well. Right. So please don't be scared about adding things like that, mixing the yarn and the, co the, the fabric. fabric. It's, it can be done. What I would say about that is what I did do is I stabilised this. Once it was finished, I 505'd and placed this 
on some fabric so that then when you make the cushion, this never touches the, the needle or the machine right, okay. because you don't want it to okay, snag. Okay, five five is on us channel. Uh, same oh, now, I need to ask, why are all three of those different sizes? They are exactly <coughs> the same. I'm so glad you asked that. They're exactly... Because no, there'll be a lot of beginners watching. And they I'll be are like, well, exactly the same cushion. Exactly the same. Now, I've always said that crochet is your journey. It's no one else's journey. It's yours. This one here, the um, who did the the forget me not Adele is obviously um, a tighter crocheter than Andrea, who's right. a bit looser, and then we've got the puppy behind, which is even bigger. So it depends how loose or how tight. So you they've do all it. used the same four, four exactly and a half. Exactly the crochet. same pattern. Exactly the same pattern. Damn. Exactly the same hook, but it. I'm, I'm quite loose. I'm, I'm quite a loose crocheter. Yeah. So mine would come out probably, I'm just having a look. Mine's probably uh, going to be... Uh, not crochet, the uh, forget me not to about sell out, just to warn you. That, that's, again, that's, um, that's very close to me with the forget me not. I'm more this size when I do mine right, because okay. I'm a bit loose. So, so basically, all they're the exactly patterns the are all exactly the same. All You're not exactly using a bigger same. pattern for the dog. They're all exactly the same, just how you crochet. And I want you to, to know that as well because there's no right or wrong no, way. No, so no. Um, really, it's down to you. Yeah. And what I also would say, you will have enough uh, yarn, uh, yarn just to do, if you wanted to do just a little border around the outside before you turn it into whatever you turn yeah. it into. And also, everyone's got their stash of yarn, haven't they, at home? Oh, so. We've all got it, haven't we? And white works makes all of these pings. So yes. if you've got, we've all got a stash of yeah. white, haven't we? So shall we get started? Yes, oh, please. Can I just mention these fish? They oh, yeah, 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 are yeah. amazing. They are incredible. And all oh, they... that's what you use them for. I had no idea, you see. What was going around in your mind? No, I don't know. I looked at them and thought <laughs> they're pretty as ornaments, but they look like children's <laughs> toys to me. You know what I mean? When you're working corner to corner um, with graphs, and that's what we're doing, we're working <coughs> against a chart, you need to have multiple colours going along the row. Right. If you just leave them all hanging on the, from the ball, you get in an awful pickle, a real, real pickle. So if you can have them hanging behind, oh, yeah, I see. hanging behind in their separate colours, then you're not going to get all snagged up. Right. So that's what these are for, and they—I can't believe the price you've got them actually. No, exactly, honest. exactly. Right. Before we before we start uh, crocheting, very quick picture to show you from Sharon. Uh, oh. It was my first corner to corner project. Uh, Blanket for my great niece born last year, who I'm hoping to meet soon. Oh, I love Wendy's designs today and love watching the two of you together from Sharon. Sharon, that's beautiful. We love your designs as well. That is incredible. And it's, it's quite difficult to get, uh, to get it like that because we're only working with a certain amount of squares and each square is one corner to corner stitch. Um, and because you, I think we've got 25 by 25, they're quite raw, the pictures, so it's really nice to be able yeah. to get that much detail. There's only 10 sheep left. So the forget-me-not's gone, 10 sheep left, that's all. Right. Now, the first thing you want to do with corner to corner is don't be scared. It's right. quite a scary stitch, but please don't be scared. And it's just made up of three stitches, that's all. So we've got your increase stitch and your basic corner to corner stitch and then the decrease and that is it do not overcomplicate it any more than you need to so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the first stitch now that is classed as an increase stitch they're all in the instructions it all explains it but it, it will become much much clearer when you see it first thing we're going to do is create a slip knot and we're going to this is your tail end and the yarn that's going up here is your working yarn because yeah. that's working from the ball of wool. First thing you're going to do is you're going to place your tail over your working yarn to create a loop. You then pull your working yarn through and then you've got a slip knot. So now when I pull that, I'm going to put it on my hook. So if you pull the working yarn, that now reduces it in size. Sorry, that's a bit hard to show, but it reduces no, it in no, size. It, if you're new to crochet or you're just starting out, do not pull it too tight. You want to have nice relaxed shoulders and a nice even tension. So the first thing we're going to do is do an increase stitch. Now we've done our slip knot, so we're going to do five chains and a chain is just yarn over and pull the um, loop that is on the hook over. Now that is a chain. It is advisable to do these quite loose when you start because you need to be able to see them. Okay. Now I work the, um, I just explain, I work the 5-2 method when I do corner to corner and again that will become um, 
apparent in a moment but to create your corner and corner stitch and I'll just show you one of the stitches so each of these stitches here each of one of these sets here is a corner to corner stitch okay to start off to get my height I need to do some chains now if you do the 3 6 method then you would do three chains here but I do the 5 2 method so I'm only going to do two chains here as I say it will become clearer it is a little bit confusing are the instructions the 5 2 method the then? instructions are the 5 2 okay. and with the 5 2 it's a little bit tighter and it will give you a nicer picture if it's really really loose you tend to lose some of the yeah. clarity around the edges okay. So we go, you can do it the 6-3 if you want, but I'm not sure if you would have enough. Well, I think you probably would have enough, yeah. but it will take more. So I've done two chains. So I'm going to do three, four, and then five. Now, it's going to be my increase stitch. So I have five chains on the hook, not including... Uh, five chains, not including the one on the hook. So I'm going to work in chains three, four, and five. Now that leaves these two here not worked in. Now what that would do is create a space for me and that we need that space. So I'm going to work a treble in three, four and five. So to work a treble, we do our yarn round before we insert it. So remember I'm going into chain three, four and five. One, two, I've only done four, right? So I'm going to do, that's chain one, that's chain two, so I'm going to put it in chain three. Now what you do want to be doing is trying to pick under the V. It doesn't matter, it's not important if you don't. If you only pick the top loop up, it's not, you know, it doesn't matter. But if you can try and get under that V, so the insert hook, yarn over and pull through, and we have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, take off the first two, and yarn over and take off the last two. And that is a treble. Now what that has to, I think you're going to have to put your hand up if you need to talk, John, because I'm on a roll. Um, I'll just interrupt <laughs> you, don't worry. Yeah, oh, that's good. So what that has done, it's a little bit hard to see, but the two chains that we missed at the, min the, the beginning, it's created a little space for us. Now we need to pay attention where that space is because that's, we're going to be doing a slip stitch in there later. So I've worked a treble in chain three. I'm going to work a treble in chain four. And I'm going to then work a treble in chain five. Now it's next to the slip knot, we don't work into the slip knot. So that's that's how yours will look, that is quite normal how it will look. Now that is our first stitch completed. That is one corner to corner stitch and that represents one square on the chart. So now we need to start our next row. Now I'll just show you, I've started a little piece here. So with corner to corner we're going to do, this is this little stitch that I've just done here. So each row will then have one more stitch in. So this is our next row with two stitches. This is our next row with three, next row with four, and so on and so on. And that's how corner to corner works. So I've done my first stitch. So in my next row, I'm going to have two stitches. Now this is really, really important. This step here is really important that you get the, this in the right place now. So we need to turn this over and twist it up so that the little space that we created by not working in the first two chains sits at the top and that is really important. So I'll just show that again, that's how it was. So we kind of need to turn and flip. So that's where we want our space to be. It's a really good idea, um, and I haven't got them today, but to put a stitch marker in there. If you are... Oh, I've got stitch markers. Oh, have you got stitch markers? Yeah. If you're new to um, Corner to Corner, if you put a stitch marker in here, then you'll know exactly where to go. <laughs> Gotta be quick. Hang on. Where are we go? <laughs> we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. We'll get there in the end. <laughs> we'll get, oh, there them. we go. Stitch <laughs> markers, fourteen ninety nine. Can I also just tell you while you're with me that I've only now got the puppy in the draft. The other two have sold out. Right. right yeah, so it's really, really important if you're new to Corner to Corner that you, you get used to how the stitches form. So that uh, space there, is, it will, we'll need to work in that in a moment. So we've done one stitch, but we now want to increase because the next row has two stitches. So we work that increase exactly the same as we did to create it. So we do our five chain, one, two, three, four, 
five. And then we want to work into stitches. Do you remember? Were you listening? Yeah, three, four and five. Three. Wow, brilliant. So we want to work into stitch three, four and five. <laughs> Are they being rude? They're being very rude about me. Oh. They just couldn't believe that I could remember that. That's good. Well, I'm, you do get that when you're old, don't you? Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do and now... We do work with whippersnappers. We do. They're very young, aren't yeah. they, compared to us? So exactly, we're going to work into chains three, four and five. Now, sometimes five is hiding. Sometimes it, you know, it, it, it's stuck so close to that one that it's hiding. But yeah. if you've done five chains and you count back down and start with number three, you should be able to locate it. So again, we're just going to go into chain three with a treble. And then number four. Oh, I've got a little bit of fluff following me. Oh, I've got a knot. That's very unusual for me. Oh. I must have unpicked that and started again. What happens when you get a knot then? Um, when I get a knot, I wouldn't normally work through it. I would cut it off and um, join. Okay. Um, and then we're going to work into that last one that's located next to it. Now, if you'd got a stitch marker in here at this point, you'd see where it is here. Sometimes this stitch has a tendency to fall down and look right. like look like a pair of upside down ears. Right. Um, just make sure that that is up the right way with the two chain space. Right, but if top. you put your little stitch in, if you stitch, put, you've got yes, a marker in Yes, I would definitely, definitely do that. Yeah. So then what you're going to do, you're going to insert into that space and we're just going to do a slip stitch and those two stitches are now secured. So they're, they're not going anywhere, they're next to each other mm -hmm. now. So we've now done our first stitch of our second row, but remember we're on the diagonal, so we need another stitch here. Now we're just going to do a basic stitch here. And for a basic stitch, we're going to create that space by doing a two chain. Because that's going to, because they go on their side, what, they're up one way, uh, one stitch, and then they're on the side the other way. So we're going to create that space first and we're going to do three trebles. So it's exactly the same as the increase stitch by doing, um, the, the two chain is created by missing the remember on an increase. Uh -huh. So we just, instead of working into stitches three, four and five, we just work in that two chain space with our three trebles. So we do one and two and three. So now we've create, created our first two oh, rows. Yeah. So we've got our first stitch and then our second stitch. It's a little bit, it's a little bit confusing saying it's a stitch because it's lots of stitches, isn't it really? But it's kind of... It's one corner to corner stitch. Yes, yes. So it is very confusing yeah. because it's made up of a two chain and three trebles. Yeah, yeah. But that's, that's what I was saying about if you simplify something, then don't try and make it too complicated because oh, it yeah, isn't. Yeah, 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 it yeah, really yeah. isn't complicated. Mm -hmm. Once you've done this, I can guarantee you, once you've done this, sat there for half an hour doing it, it will just click into yeah. place. So what we're going to do now, we've done our first two rows. So we're just going to start with our increase again. So I kind of turn and flip as I'm doing my chain, but what we can do is we can turn and flip because now we want to increase along this side. Right. So we're going to do an increase stitch, which is one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to work trebles in three, four, and five. So remember the key point is to miss those first two stitches. And if you have done five, they will all be there for you to put in. So we miss the first two, and then we treble into the third. Whoops. Oh, hello, where is this going? Oh, what's happened? Well, I, I don't know why, for some reason, I only had a little bit of wool on that yarn. That's very unusual. Oh, well, you cut it off? No, well, I didn't. It was just in the centre of that ball. Oh. That, that'll teach me not to check, won't it? Mm. That will teach me now. And now it's all stuck in together. It's not Claire says so she calls a corner cord stitch a cluster. Mm. It's a cluster of something else. <laughs> It's kind of something else, okay. but um, yeah, you could call it a corner to corner cluster because yeah. a cluster is simply more than one stitch in the oh, same okay. place. So let me just join a new bit on and hopefully it won't do that. The, this ball was used by um, 
someone else so that's probably what's happened let me just get back to where i was well, she's not naming names either no i would never do that Oof. you would you yeah no absolutely not Depends one it two was, three <laughs> four five so i'm just gonna go so now i've got my five chains so remember to miss the first two yeah and then we go into the third one with a treble so it's exactly the same every time but you just expand it or whatever you call it that's just... why um it's so easy and people get so um, confused because it, it looks complicated. It really is just an increased stitch, a basic stitch, and then a decrease. So I'm yeah. going to show you a decrease in the moment. So I've done my two chain and three treble to create my stitch. Mm -hmm. And then at the moment, it's all wibbly wobbly. So yeah. I'm just going to anchor it in that two chain with a slip stitch. So a slip stitch is insert hook, yarn over, and just take it off the hook so you don't actually do anything with it. Yeah, just holding it in place. Isn't exactly. It? So we now, I, that's my first stitch, and then I need my second and my third. Now you will find if you're doing three rows, you'll have three stitches. If you're on row 25, you'll have 25 stitches. That's how corner to corner works. Oh, okay. It's also a good idea, if you're not working by a chart, to actually have a row counter next to you so that you can just click when you've done a row so you know where you are or with the charts, just mark it off as you go. Yeah. Now, in the, in the instructions, there are written row by row instructions, so it would tell you what to do, um, and then each colour has a code. Now, don't be confused by the codes, because my first colour is B. Now, that's background. So I tend to use, if it's grey, I would do, um, if it's like dark grey, I'd do DG, or if it's light blue, I'd do LB, so that you can then you can see what colours you need to use. But once you've made these, if you have wool that are in, in your stash, then by all mm -hmm. means, just make as many as you want. I would just say, personally, I wouldn't mark off on that. I would photocopy the chart on the back. I oh, wouldn't yes, mark yes, it yes, off. Yes, yes, yes. So now we're just going to do a basic stitch. Now the basic stitch is chain two and three treble. So we haven't got stitches three, four, and five to work in, so we work into that space that we created. So we just do three trebles. One. June calls two. it a corner-to-corner -corner block. Oh, that's good. Well, it kind of is. It is. So we've done our three trebles to create our space. But again, it's all wibbly-wobbly, so we need to anchor it to the next stitch. Mm -hmm. So we do our slip stitch. Now, as with crochet and knitting, unless you're doing a really, really intricate pattern, it is just a case of repeat. You're on repeat all the time. So now we're going to come to our last stitch. And again, it's just a basic stitch. So I do two chain. And all the two, two chain is doing is creating that space where we can slip stitch next row. And then we do three treble into the space at the bottom. So that's one, two, and three and it's kind of like a set of steps so that you just keep going up a step each time so we've now got three in the row so that's how you work your basic corner to corner stitch right now i've got to where i need to get so i want to now decrease okay and to do that very very simple is i'm going to make a three by three square so at the moment i've got three along that side three along that side so now I want three along each of these sides. So instead of starting the next row with an increase I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to work a slip stitch along the top here so I'm going to do a slip stitch in that one the top of that stitch and the top of that and then a slip stitch into that two chain space. Right. Um, this obviously you won't do this until you You've gone past the middle of the cushion. In yes, real life. please, You're please, just doing as a demonstration. please decrease it when you're supposed to in the pattern. Yes, it yes. does tell you when Not to decrease. After three rows. No, don't, don't, think, well, don't I've done do it now. Wendy only did three yeah, rows. Exactly. So I only need to do three. Um, so I've done two slip stitches across the side. I'm just going to do one more slip stitch into that corner. And now what that's done, it's put my hook where it needs to be, ready to start. So all we do is we turn it, and we're going to do. A basic stitch so we're not going to increase anymore so we literally just do two chain and then three treble because remember that's all our basic stitches two chain three treble and we're three trebling into that space 
It's wibbly wobbly, so we need to secure it to the next one. So we mm -hmm. look for that chain space and do a slip stitch. And then we just need to finish that row with a basic stitch. So two chain and then three treble. It's wobbly, so we need to secure it. And if you can think of something really silly to do, it will help you remember. So now we've nearly completed our square. And we now need just to do exactly the same again. So we turn it round and then we slip stitch in the top of those three stitches. So you've got the, sorry, the two stitches and the chain space. So we slip stitch in and then we slip stitch in that space. And then all we're going to do is a basic stitch. So two chain and then three treble into that bottom two chain space. And to stop it being wibbly wobbly, we just do a slip stitch and you have created your little square. So we started with one, oh, there we go. We started with one, we increased to two, then three, and then back down to two, and then back down to one. Okay, now, Jojo says she's answering out loud. She's shouting <laughs> at the telly out loud. That's because she's such a good teacher, she says. She's answering me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we would just, just, we would just secure that last stitch and then sew all our ends in. Brilliant. So that's our little square. But of course, you're not going to have a little square. You're going to have a 25 by 25 square. So you would keep increasing until you're told to then start decreasing. Right. You're looking a little bit perplexed. No, no, there. it's Hannah's talking to me. That's why you're looking perplexed, yeah. isn't it? No, no, it's just to say that she's on the phone at the moment to Rebecca Reed. We've got lots and lots of corner to corner projects coming up. While we have a moment, this is coming from Roxana saying, uh, hi, Hannah, John and Wendy. <laughs> Uh, corner to corner crochet also makes great triangular shawls when the finished article is well blocked to open up the stitches. Day two, John, only four to go. Then you can have a lie down in that darkened room. Yeah, only for one day though, because I'm back in the following day. But anyway, that's lovely. That's gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Um, and what I would say um, with Roxana, it looks like, I'm not sure if she has, but it looks like she's done the 6-3 because then that will give you a little bit more of an open wound. Okay. So with these, because we've done the 5-2, it tends to bring them in. Yeah. Because you've only got a two chain space to put three stitches, it tends to keep it smaller. Yeah. Now I prefer to use that for graphs and charts because it just keeps it more uniform. But for something like that, how amazing mm, is that? Beautiful. That's gorgeous, Absolutely isn't beautiful. it? Absolutely uh, gorgeous. Um, what about a unit show that has changed colour? I am going okay. to show you now. Anna just wants to say something to me. Oh yeah, we've got the blocking. Got the oh yeah, we've got the square and block thing on um, on Sewing Street tomorrow. It's a that that you've been ironing on. Oh. It's a blocking thing that you can pin and block out on. But that's Sewing Street tomorrow. And blocking is quite crucial yeah. in crochet and knitting because it just makes everything uniform. Now, as you'll see on this little bit here, I'm working to a chart. Now, I won't show you my chart because it's photocopied. Is it? It's photocopied. Oh, okay. Um, but I'm working by chart. It's telling me how to do it row by row right. and colour by colour. So you can either do it where you just say, you know, one background, two green, whatever, or you can follow the chart and it's colour coded. Right. So um, that's what I'm doing now. Now, I'm not sure what row I'm on, so I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've got nine steps. Right. So that must mean I'm on row 10. Because I've completed, yes, yeah. I've done nine. Now I'm just looking at my chart and with corner to corner charts, they start from one corner and then go all the way up to the other corner. Now mine, are a little bit different to some where some people put numbers all the way around their charts. I only put them in the corners, um, in the edges of the rows. So my number one will have the number one in the right hand side. So odd numbers you work down and even numbers you work up to the right. Um, and you just follow them. So I'm on row 10 and I'm going to, it's telling me I have to do one, two, three background colours. So I'm going to, I, mean, I have done a little bit here, so you can see I've put it on bobbins. Okay, I'm confused. So you've got numbers at the side and numbers across the bottom. Yes. So if you're on row 10. Yes, you start where the number 10 is. But then you just follow it straight in a straight, straight line. Straight diagonally, yes, you follow it diagonally. Okay. 
So you start Sorry, with number I'm one. Confused, yeah. You're confused. Right. So you start with um, number one, and then you number two will have two stitches. Number three will have three stitches. Number four will have four stitches. Right. So on my number ten. Oh, okay. I'll so it goes up diagonally on number ten. Um, if you're a little bit unsure about following charts, then there is a row by row. So yeah. if you have a look, I can't think what it, will it be on num page number three. John? I've got your. I've got. That's why oh, I'm confused. Oh, I'm, I see. Your, yeah. Yours because it's sold out. Oh, it's gone it? away. Oh, oh, that, I've only got the giraffe. Yes, and the doesn't matter. Just look at one of those yeah. on the third page. On the third page. On the third page, and you it will tell you what to do with. Um, in row by row. Oh yes, yeah. increasing row, decreasing yes. row. Yes. Oh, perfect. So you don't have to follow this. You don't have to follow the that's chart. That's confusing me, but that wouldn't confuse and me. And a lot of people do not like charts. That's fine. Um, but you've given them the option of both. And more people Brilliant. are visual. Yeah. So I'm going. So I'm actually going to do what you're doing. Then I'm going to follow yeah, it. Yeah. You see, I think if Hannah and I were both sitting crocheting mm. in Hannah's house, I've never been invited to Hannah's house. <laughs> she would use the picture. Right. And I'd use. I'd be using the nut. This. this because she's more visual, aren't you, Anna? You're more of a visual. You could go, oh, yeah, I can see I need to do a bit of detail and I need to go back to the background. Whereas Personally, I'd be I, off I this. would be the same as you yeah. because it, someone's telling me. Yeah. Whereas with the chart, I'm having to work it out for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, I would but follow Hannah's the mind works visually rather than because she'd look at, and I don't mean this rudely, Hannah, she would get confused with the, the letters and the numbers and things like that. And that's how it make, makes me sound like I'm picking on Hannah. I'm not at all, but we just, we work. Yeah. Different ways. And also, um, like with, with the actual row by row, I've got one, one line blue, one line black, one line blue, one line black, because sometimes when you're looking down, they all get merged yes, into exactly. one. The last thing you want to do is get to the end of the row and find that when you look at it, it's not yeah. quite right. Yeah. And I would say that every so often, just have a look at the chart to check that your picture looks like what you're making. Okay, right. So, so I'm telling you on row 10 is, so I've, it's telling me I've got to do three background. So because I'm still increasing at the moment, I do my increase stitch. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to work in three, four. And I'm sorry if I'm clanking because th these little fish are just like having a little swim under there. They're fish just, are all sold out. I'm not surprised. So I've done one. And the, your increase is counted as one of the stitches along the row. And I'm going to do another one. So one... This is my second stitch, and as I say, it's telling me to do three background. Oh gosh, I am sorry, I am clanking. Let me bring oh, it up a bit. They are having a little dance there, aren't they? And then one, two, and then just finish the stitch. So I've now done, I've now done the three colours. It's telling me three background. And then it's saying to me, I need to do one medium blue. So this is medium blue. Now you'll see that I've got my tail at the front here. Now you need to uh, work out which is the front, sorry, this is the back, which is the front and which is the back. Um, if I put it around, this is how it should look because you want to keep your front really, really neat because then if your back's really messy and needs to do loads of ends, but you turn it into a cushion, you don't really need to sew mm -hmm. them in. You need to make sure they're secure but you won't have to sew them in. If you're making like the giraffe, you do that is reversible so you do need to make sure that your ends are all tidy. Right. So then all we're going to do instead of cutting this off, I'm just going to undo a little bit because it's not starting. I need to start here because I need to do my, my slip stitch yeah. up here. But I don't want to cut it off because it's quite close. So all I'm going to do is take the wool up here and then I'm going to do my slip stitch with the new colour. Now by doing that, it just tidies the work up a little bit. So I'm going to insert and I'm going to do the new stitch, with the, the, the slip stitch with the new colour. Pull that nice and tight and then you're going to get a really nice finish. Jan says this is fascinating. I absolutely love corner to corner. But these are, I don't know what people did way back, <laughs> because these are revolutionary, these little fish. Oh, what, fish. the little fishes? They yeah. really are. And then I have, it says I have to do one medium blue. So all the stitches along the diagonal are just normal basic stitches of two chain and three treble into the same stitch. So it's telling me to do one medium blue, and now it's telling me to do four light blue. Right. Now, the light blue's over here, but this is where I need to slip stitch. Right. And I'm quite happy 
to just, I don't like cutting off if I don't need to. So if I can carry the wool, I will. Yeah. And I can, because now if I do the slip stitch, remember we do the slip stitch with the new color to yeah. stop it showing. I'm just going to insert. I'm going to do the slip stitch with the new color, but I'm not going to pull it tight. I'm just going to keep that nice and loose so that yarn goes the length of those two chain and do my slip stitch. Yeah, you can do that if it's close by. You wouldn't better do it if it was a long way away. If it's a long you? way away, you do it completely. You just cut it, cut, cut it. the old one off, but make sure you leave a long enough tail to be able yeah, to Yeah, yeah, because you're only literally going up by that much. But if it was like, that, if you've oh, got no. black, black giraffe, you've got a mouth here and you've got the... Um, nostrils here, you wouldn't oh, no do way. It, a no, no. jump over yes. like a big You would then that. just cut it off and then start a new colour yeah. because you don't want that strand because it's going to be carried up all the way and you don't want that. So now I'm just going to do a side stitch. Now I did carry that yarn over but because I'm now going to work three stitches, uh, three trebles into that space, whoops, there we go, the fish is misbehaving, it's hidden that strand of yarn that I carried across. Yeah. But it's really, really important that you don't pull that section there tight when mm -hmm. you carry it across, otherwise you're gonna bunch up. And then all we do is we do a slip stitch, and then you can see how neat that's made that color change. Now this is the reverse, and you can see where I've gone across here, mm -hmm. I've got that little strand. I'm yeah. not worried about that because that's on the back. And if I turn it over and show you the front, then it's really, really neat on the front. Right. Really neat. And then all you do is you just, if, if you are new to Corner to Corner, I would absolutely follow the written instructions. And I would probably put a piece of paper or a piece of card underneath the row you're doing yeah, yeah, yeah. so that you doesn't merge because um, it's very easy to unpick but I hate unpicking because it's, it's a lot of work, isn't yeah. it? So definitely. And then all you do is you just carry on along the row following the instructions. So it's telling me that I need to do four light blue. Now what I didn't do is I didn't leave myself enough light blue, I don't think, to complete four stitches. No, I didn't. If that's the case, have we got time to show this? We yeah, have. yeah, go on. So I've just done my next stitch. Got about five minutes. Okay. We do need to talk about how we change the um, the giraffe about the giraffe. Um, yes, absolutely. So border and the cushion. Um, it's you can't always gauge how much that you need to put on your fish. So if you have like me. What's the word for wrongly estimated? Well, wrongly estimated how much you need, then just tie on a new. But what, a secret to actually joining is to make it a really loose knot. So you don't want to be doing that and really pulling it tight. So I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to cut off a bit so I haven't got the, the ball following me. And then you just carry on as usual and completely ignore the knot. So we're just going to carry on. So I can feel the knot coming. So I'm just going to ignore him. So I'm going to do a slip stitch there. So I've now gone past the knot, and then a two chain, and then just complete the next stitch, and I'll show you what we're going to do. So I've just completed the next stitch and secured it. I'm just going to leave him for the moment. So what you would do, you'll go back to your, you'll go back to your knot. Now because you didn't tie it tight, undo it. Don't worry, it's not, you're not going to fall apart, it's not going to come undone. But you just undo that knot, like that. So it's completely undone now. Mm -hmm. Now, tie it back up. Just do the first one loose. You just want it to lay on the back of your work. And then do the second one, you can tie it a little bit tighter and you can get that biting point. Now what that has done, then done, once those ends are sewn in, you are never going to see where you joined. If you tie it first and then work past a knot, it never sits where you want it to. Okay. So this is a top tip to do to when you tie your, put in a new colour. Um, in your question to the giraffe, uh, oh, the lady, yeah, yeah, the lady okay. wanted Let me just to show make... that first of all. So the giraffe here, uh, there were two questions. First of all, you've done a border on yours, mm -hmm. but there's, there's no instructions no. for the border, is there? No. 
No. So if anyone does want to know how to do the border, just just message me. Okay. Um, it literally is just working trebles. And if you can do corner to corner, I am very, very confident that you will, well, you will already know how to work a treble because yeah. they're okay. treble stitches. Yeah. Um, yes. So Jacqueline was the one who said she wanted to make a giraffe cushion for her son. I think I can answer this one because you said it earlier. You just finish it off as the pattern says, then mount it on some fabric with some H640. No, what, not H640. No, what the lady's saying is, I mean, that's blanket size. Oh, she wants to make it into a smaller cushion. It, she wants to make, I, I'm assuming that's what the lady means. Oh, okay. she wants, I, on, um, is it not? I, uh, that's, that's, sorry, that's how I read it. Okay, Jacqueline, she said... Let me just have this a point look. I've noticed, I'm very new to crochet, I need to make a giraffe cushion for my son. How can I change the blanket to a cushion? Right, no, no. Sure. So you, you have to make it this size, wouldn't you? You'd have to make it this size. Right. If, if you're very good with maths, if you're very good, then I've just had a look. These are 25 by 25. If you have a look at the giraffe's head, he is less than 25 stitches. So you could just mark off that section, the head section. Or but it would only cushion. be the head. Yeah, or no, make no. a big cushion. No, no, that's <laughs> what I was saying. So when you made that one with, a, with the fabric back, you, mount, you crocheted it, you mounted it onto some cotton fabric, mm -hmm. and then you made a bag, and then so you're only sewing through the, the, the cushion. The fabric is the only thing that's touching yeah, the machine, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, oh, no, so you could so either so they're the two solutions. You either make because it won't be this big, Jacqueline. It'll be that big, won't it? Won't I thought no, sorry. I thought Jacqueline meant that she wanted yeah, to yeah, make no, it into no, a cushion, it's two, but we've smaller. Got two, so we've got two. Yeah. We've got two solutions, right? That's how big it would be, Jacqueline. If you just if you literally just um, crocheted it, so your cushion would be that big, and then you could do it like that one, or. As Wendy just said, just do to here, and then on this bit here, just put green there, so you've just got the head. But you would need to start up the chart. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Don't yes, start yes. from the bottom of the chart. Yeah, of you course. would, you would probably have to photocopy it and then chop the bit off you didn't want and redesign it. Okay, but, perfect. But you can do it. Um, right, very quickly, I'm just going to say to you that Lulu said thank you very much, Wendy, for showing Christina to sing. I love doing it. But always get confused with the colour change and how to do it the best way. You've helped me a lot with your demonstrations. You're very good explaining. Margaret says before plastic fish, my mum did a lot of fair rails, so she used reels made from cereal packets and she had a few wooden reels from an auntie. Jacqueline says, thank you, Wendy. Want to change just to giraffe head size. So that's yes, it. So yeah. it is literally just do that. Um, I understand now. Just measure the size of the head. That's all I needed. There you go. Brilliant, Jacqueline. Oh, brilliant. That's excellent. That is really good. But please, please don't be scared because corner to corner is so versatile. Yeah. And, you know, you could make, as I say, you could put a border on it before you make it into a cushion so it's a bit bigger. So, And if you are a, a, a looser crocheter, then you're going to get a bigger cushion anyway. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much. You're indeed. very welcome. When you're, now, when you're in next, I know that, May the 3rd and May the 4th. Sorry, not my, not my fault. And she's not on with me both days. She's on because she's on Rebecca Reed on the Monday and then with me on the Tuesday. Right. I'm very excited about Monday, I'm John. sure you are. Well, I'm sure you'll have a lovely day. Right, OK, I've got two bundles left. That's all I've got. Giraffe is this one here. So you get the instructions. You get three balls of green, one ball of black, one ball of yellow, one ball of mustard, one of latte and one of caramel. Uh, I don't know if they're the right colours, but that's what you get. Uh, £19.99 pence for that. And then, oh, and that will make this. Sorry, I'll show you this. That'll make that. Over half the stock's gone. That will make that without the border. So do you think there's enough green in there to do that border? Or would you have to do something diff clever with it? Um, I think... Yeah. I All think right. it possibly. <laughs> Your face answered the question. That was fine. I'm just not sure. <laughs> okay. But no, no, it's honest. No, it's supposed to be honest. It's better, better to say, I don't there know. There will be enough... Of all the yeah, the so arm. you could make the board out of a different colour, yes. basically, right? And then we've got the little puppy. So in this one, you get the instructions. You get one white, one black, one caramel, one latte, two blue, one baby red, one baby yellow, and one baby pink. Plus your instructions, seventeen pounds and ninety nine pence, and that will make that one. You need a four or a four and a half um, crochet hook. Uh, uh, there they are. Here they are, very quickly. I've only got literally a minute, so I've got four. Four and a half first. There's your four and a half first. Yarn Lane is next on on Friday. It'll be me and a brand new technique called Crocodile <gasps> Stitch Crochet. And who's that. that with? Oh, Vanessa Winwood. I've already written that on my um, on my Facebook. There, have you done the four one? Yeah, four. There you go. Brilliant. Right now, I'm back tomorrow morning on Sewing Street. 
At eight o'clock, so I've got Fiona Hesford and I've got Kerry from Living in Loveness with me tomorrow. So it'll be day three of <laughs> six tomorrow. It'll be fine, be fine. I'll be absolutely fine. I've just been a bit hysterical today. It's her fault, I blame her. <gasps> right, thank you, Wendy, for You're everything you've done today. You're very welcome. Remember, check out your baskets. Uh, and remember, I'll be back tomorrow morning at eight o'clock on Sang Street. I'm going to say goodbye now. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, Click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again.